Morning. On today's episode, uh, we are going to be dealing with welding thick aluminum. Now I have a piece of scrap here. It's half inch thick, rough, roughly T6 aluminum. Already has a weld on it, but don't worry about that. There's a lot of issues that come up when you try and weld big thick aluminum like this. The biggest issue is you simply don't have enough power to weld it. If you're like me and you have a 200, 210, 220 amp machine, when you try and go and weld on something like this, maxed out, your machine is barely going to be able to produce a weld. And not only that, it's going to have no penetration and be very weak. And you're almost impossible to do like a fillet weld or something. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a couple tricks on how to make the most out of what you have. So I'm going to run a bead on here. This plate's ice cold. And we're going to see what it looks like at maxed out 200 amps. My settings are 75% AC balance. That's 25% cleaning, 75% penetration. We're running 60 hertz and we're running square wave to get the most amount of heat input into this piece. But let's run a bead, see what we got. And then we're going to come up with a couple ideas on how to get a better, better end result than what we have. All right, I ran a bead on there at 210 amps. The start of the weld was pretty bad. It took me a while to get a, like a decent puddle going. Now there's a lot of soot on this guy. If you look all this black soot, um, a lot of that's probably just surface contaminants on the plate. I didn't clean it as good as I probably should have. But let me brush this just so we can take a look at what we got here. Yeah, that plate's a little hot. Whoa. All right. If you look here, oh, bumped the camera there. The beginning of that weld is just, it was not welding good. Definitely not enough heat. I slowed down quite a bit. I was able to run I mean, a weld per se, but you can just tell by the size of how high them stacks are that uh, definitely on a cold side. And of course, I left a crater there. I bet on that. So anyways, you can definitely see this weld over here that's already on this piece of scrap is a lot wider. Well, what we're going to do, since this is so thick, is we're going to take a torch and we're going to preheat this plate to about 500 degrees, four or 500 degrees. And then we're going to re-weld it and take a look at how well the weld at 210 amps or so flows out on this. And I think we're going to see a stark difference. There's a couple of ways that you can go about uh, gauging preheat temperature. Right here I have a 400 degree melt stick, temp stick. I'll show you how those work. So we can use that. I've heard guys using bar soap. I don't know if it works better if it's Irish Spring or not, but I've heard uh, putting bar soap on it and then once it gets to the temperature, the soap blackens. I don't know if that works. Um, I suppose we can try it as well. we'll. I guess you and I both will find out. I generally use a torch and just put soot on it from the oxyacetylene torch and then burn the soot off. And as soon as the soot burns off, I know that I'm at the correct temperature. So I guess let's start out by taking this soap. And I read this online and I've never tried it. And we all know you can't really trust everything that's online. So I guess I'll just wipe some of that down there a little bit. Smells good at least, right? And I will spark up old Smokey here and do my preferred method and uh, we'll see what happens.
All right, so we got a good preheat there. That soap trick, I probably shouldn't have put the soot on it because I figure we're not going to be able to see it. But uh, our temp stick melts. It's actually a little bit over 400, so that's all right. So I'm going to do, now that that's all set up, I'm going to run a pass and we're going to take a look at it. I think we're going to see a pretty stark difference in it. Alrighty. Wow, that's, that is hot. Let me zoom in here for you guys. Now there's quite a contrast here. Our first weld definitely was cold. We can tell that because it's crowned up and it's very narrow. When we welded on this preheated plate, significantly wider weld, flatter weld, both of these are welded with the same settings, 210 amps. The preheat helps significantly. Let me see if I can't uh, grab this with this double glove it. So you can see a lot flatter, a lot better looking overall. If you're going to weld on thick plates and you only have a 200 amp welder, the preheat will matter hugely. It'll definitely help you out. But it's still, you know, it's still important to understand what your limits are. If you're trying to weld something critical out of half inch plate and all you have is a 200 amp TIG welder, you may really honestly not want to even do that. It's just, it all depends. If it's something, I don't know, for a boat that doesn't really matter, like non-critical stuff, this will definitely get you, get the job done. Another option you do have, if you run helium, 100% pure helium, or even honestly a helium mix, but 100% pure helium is preferred instead of argon, that will increase your arc gap voltage and thus in significantly increase the heat input. Uh, 200, 210 amp machine on pure helium on AC will weld, uh, I would say probably closer to 250 to 260 amp machine. So realistically, your welds with that machine in pure helium would look something like this without a preheat. And then if you did preheat it and use helium, even better yet. Like I said, um, the main times I guess I would use this is on like a thicker aluminum casting I need to repair by preheating it first and then welding it. It's just going to weld so much better than you know, thick plates that are ice cold like what this will. But hopefully that helps you out. Uh, if you got any comments, questions, want to see me do a video on anything you're curious about, leave me a comment or a message. Thanks.